Professor Heather Jones from the State University uh, of New York, the SUNY University, and uh, myself, uh, Jose Luis Gonzalez from Universidad Autónoma de San Luis Potosí. So I'm gonna I'm gonna share the the presentation now. Ya se ve? Sí. Okay. So, um, this is an ongoing project. Um, basically, it's it's very my, my intervention is very short. Do that. I now we we are joined by Heather, who is one of the the key pieces of the of the project, and and I just want to share with you what is. Uh, uh, COIL, the, um, the framework that we uh, enabled us to collaborate together. COIL, um, it's an in, uh, initiative by SUNY, that is uh, the State University of New York, where Heather is uh, collaborating and working. And COIL stands for Collaborative Online International Learning. So a brief history is uh, uh, around 2004, in the University of New York, they realized that uh, there could be a, an online international uh, collaboration between that university in New York and other universities uh, around the globe. So it pushes really uh, remote collaborative learning. Even way before this pandemic, they were very interested in this uh, cross-cultural experience and an inter-multi-transdisciplinary approach with collaboration. So uh, the long story short, the, 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 the way they do it is that they have this big database with all the uh, professors at the State University in New York and all the professors from around the world. And they push you, push you to find a partner where you can develop a, an experience, a collaborative experience. So this is kind of uh, like a match.com or a, or a teacher's uh, meeting um, website where you have to find a partner that it's up to the challenge and to share uh, a vision of teaching uh, your course. So it's it really, you're looking for availability, maybe sharing, uh, share the same vision or look for something you can find from engineering, biology, everything. And in around 2007, uh, we and the University of uh, Universidad de, de Autónoma de San Luis Potosí, uh, we started the program and I found uh, Heather. So um, our backgrounds are uh, not the same, but are kind of related. She's an associate professor in fine arts uh, and I'm an industrial designer. She is part of the Department of Fine Arts in the Genesee Community College. That is one of the, uh, a part of the State University of New York. And I am a professor, as I told them, uh, told you uh, of industrial design and, and so one of the very first things that we uh, wonder upon or have uh, questions to, to collaborate, it was why? Why should we uh, move our uh, programs and our curricula to make room to this collaboration, that this uh, online uh, cross-cultural collaboration? So one of the first things that come up, it was well, why, why should we uh, come up with something? Um, and, and it was difficult because uh, um, we took a course and we had to push the students to communicate in a way that it was uh, kind of new, new to all. It was also kind of um, difficult because some of the students, especially the ones in Mexico, they, they spoke English, but not maybe proficiently. So they were kind of shy about it. And also even the cultures, like we were uh, an hour different uh, um, and sometimes 
the, the responses and the networking wasn't working that well. Uh, also, the times were tight because each and every one of us have an individual calendar because we have our classes that we have to, uh, to achieve a goal and teach something, but also we wanted to include this. And also, um, well, we were uh, the first experiment, let's call it that, it was kind of to design a new object and it was kind of complicated, but we always uh, saw this collaboration as uh, something to make room and to improve the learning experience. And we kind of go, went back, set reset goals, uh, enhance the way that the students could communicate. For that, the WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, and other social media were very helpful. And we create a platform, kind of the, 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 the project that we develop, it was based on a platform where everybody could collaborate and could work uh, among, among them. So I don't know, Heather, if you could share the, the happy ending. Okay, well, first of all, thanks for uh, letting me participate. I really appreciate the invitation. Um, you know, one of the things we had to figure out when we first started the COIL project was what are our common kind of, what's the common ground in what we teach? And, um, you know, what are the things that we really want to get out of it that's, that's larger than our academic goals? And so academically, Jose and I both teach elements and principles of design. So we chose color. So academically, the students in, in the assignment are all focusing on color theory, composition, use of color and expression, expressive ways. But simultaneously, what they got out of the COIL experience was um, they, they got practice in learning about international collaborations and globalization and how to communicate, you know, past their own community. And one of the reasons that I really wanted to join COIL and the COIL experience is I teach study abroads in the summer and we travel through Europe and what I was finding is the students who go on those study abroad trips gain so much more than the academic lessons of photography or design. Um, but how, but not, every, not every student can do that. Not every student can travel to get that experience. And so COIL is based on the idea of giving students that, that traveling or study abroad experience without leaving their local community. And, um, you know, Jose and I have worked together now for multiple years on this project and we've continued to tweak it to really get it to work for the students. Uh, and and I, I think at this point it is quite successful. So a cultural color study, I'll just quickly um, talk you through what we've done here. Uh, the project starts with um, students focusing on personally uh, reflecting on the meaning of a color in their daily life. So what we did is we broke the students up. Could you move to the next slide? I think I hit the, the SLOs. Um, we broke the students up into groups, color groups. So uh, colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. And there were students from Mexico and students from the US in all the groups. And then they had to photograph one color in their daily lives for one week. And then after that, this is the surprising part. Uh, in the project, they started to, when they started to share the color photographs with each other, with their international peers, uh, the color observations um, became more interesting. Students started to really see how other people view color. And I think that's where the project got um, the most interesting because color was no longer just their own personal view, but it was about encompassing sociology, geography, and the cultural value of color. And so it was really an in-depth view of color concepts that was developed um, through this international communication in the project. And one thing about color is everyone can relate to, to it. We can all relate to color and we can all share our, our, um, our own personal 
vision of how color you know interacts with our daily lives and how we relate to that in our artwork so it was a really nice common ground for both the students in mexico and the students in the u.s um, a light subject you know and I, and I think that worked really well when we chose that subject matter so um, after they took their photographs we um, had them kind of get into groups and through social media share and that went on for multiple weeks. And then eventually they started to collage all of their group photographs into one collage of that color. And we'll talk more about that as we go down the slide. Um, yes, the, where we're located is up on the screen right now. We are located in near Rochester, New York, uh, right on the border of Niagara Falls. Uh, it's very cold up here. Um, we live, it's very country. We are kind of nestled in all of the Finger Lakes. We're about five hours north of New York City to drive. So uh, our geography is really different than Mexico. And you know, I think that was fun to see when, when the students shared their photographs as well, this, the, the totally different scenery that um, kind of came out of the project. So do you wanna keep going, Jose, or do you wanna talk more about that, the location and stuff? One of the things that we did just shortly is that uh, it was very important for us to, in order to develop the empathy and to, to, to say that someone else was at the other end of the phone or the communication, it was to really locate the students. So we used these presentations to see, okay, the, those guys over there exist. They are there, they are eager to collaborate and, and, and that's the territory, that's the place that they occupy. Uh, but take it from here, Heather, you. Well, these are our color groups. I'm sorry, I didn't have my, my team, my students' photographs in there. Um, but you can see it's about six to eight students per group. And so these students communicated back and forth, sharing their images of red, their images of orange, and really communicated um, you know, on all different levels. And what was interesting is the human connection matters. You know, as they shared their stories behind the color photographs and their own vision of color in their daily lives, what I think that's when the real learning started for the, for the students. And that's where we started to see them, you know, gain empathy for each other. Their similarities, you know, my students would come into class talking about, you know, jokes that they, they shared in their social media chats and, um, you know, how they were surprised at how, how much similarity was uh, between the different people and the different groups from such a long distance away. So this would be the color of purple and the collage of images. And I think what's most interesting when you look at these is some of the photographs are universal. They could be taken in Mexico, they could be taken in the US, um, and, and everyone can really relate to those images in a universal way. Um, and then some of the photographs really stand out to be culturally significant or surprising in, you know, in that kind of um, geography or place category. Um, could we scroll through a few more, Jose? We've got yes. yellow. Uh, I want to get to orange if we could. Okay, orange. Orange and green is on this page. Um, you know, orange stood out to my class in particular, and they really loved this image of the flowers being carried by the donkey. And, and yeah, I asked them why, you know, why, why was this such an impressive image? And they thought it was a beautiful image when we critiqued the photographs of orange, but what stood out to them is it was something that they would never see in New York. Um, and so they really enjoyed that cultural difference, you know, seeing things that they wouldn't get the opportunity to, to see in their local community as they took these photographs and shared these photographs. You know, my group, uh, we're upstate New York, so right now it's orange leaves and pumpkins and, you know, sunset images would come out of their interpretation of orange, but um, the Mexican students had citrus warmer climate images, lots of architecture with beautiful color. Um, these are the things that my, my group from, from up here where all the buildings are fairly gray, uh, those were interesting to them visually. Uh, and you know, I think that interaction is what was um, most compelling for them in the project. 
they learned about color theory, but most importantly, they learned about each other. And that was the, that's the empathy that we were going for, you know, breaking down all of those kind of stereotypes that um, college kids have about different places in the world, but, you know, really seeing how they could connect. And also globalization is a skill that everyone needs in the future. And, you know, hopefully I think what we wanted our students to get out of this project is confidence to really participate and tackle um, international collaborations and projects and know that they could succeed at that. So I think that in itself was a real learning experience. Um, we are taking it a step further now that we're a couple years in. And um, what we've asked our students to do this year is submit their, their best photographs um, from the color study to an international juried exhibit. It's going to be a student exhibit titled The Color Connection. Um, we imagine the exhibit to uh, be a collection of 100 photographs spanning all of the colors collaged through a gallery and really, um, you know, showing that deeper cultural connection through images and this study of color that the students have created. And uh, so, you know, I think there's a, a, a new application career application that we're, we're giving them, a resume builder for this international exhibit that they'll be able to participate in. And we'd like to have the exhibit uh, shown in upstate New York and then also uh, in San Luis Potosi. So I hope I said that right. Um, but you know, sharing the exhibit as well with both groups would be really excellent. So um, it is an open call for any students that wanna participate. And Jose, is there anything else you'd like to say about the the project or the the exhibit? Well, we, we have this, the, the also the group, the Facebook group, but uh, it's open for collaboration. It's, that would be it. I, I'm sorry, thank you. Well, thank you to to Heather for the presentation. Thank you for your attention. And I'm playing both, both roles right now. <laughs>